Okay, so now it's time to work on the actual part that these platforms and the steps slot onto. So it's the support structure, the part that's actually going to be mounted onto the wall and welded to the uh, beam that, uh, that it will be welded to. So the part that's going into the wall needs some big bolts going through it. So this is a plate that is going to go against the wall. And then this uh, bad boy here will be welded on top of there like so. And so what I would do is do a, a multi-run around here. And then the platform actually gets welded onto that. What I've decided to do is to drill these out. And unfortunately, I haven't got a big enough drill bit. Uh, we do have a rotor brooch here but not a big enough rotor brooch to cut it. And because a rotor brooch is actually, you know, highly precisionly machined and they're really good, um, it was more cost effective to just get these cheap hole saws from home base made by Craftrite. So it's a bit of a product review, we'll see how this goes, but this was far cheaper than buying the proper things. I need to use this one and hopefully I'll be able to drill all six holes with it. If it works out well, I'll be very, very pleased. I thought, ah, for what it was worth, it was worth giving it a try. So that's what I'm going to do now. So what I mean by rotor brooch is one of these. Now these are absolutely fantastic. And rotor brooch don't make these. Another company makes these, but this is a mag drill. And rotor brooch makes the cutting tools to go in the mag drill. So normally people call these rotor brooches as well, but it's not essentially the tool that goes into the mag drill. Um, but we have this set here at the engineering workshop, but they're, they're not big enough. And to buy a uh, bespoke size, uh, would, would, it would have been quite a big cost. And considering we don't have one already means that we don't use it often enough. So um, these were cheap as chips, so I'm just going to test out what this can do in a mag drill, just because mag drills are awesome, and I want to have one for myself, definitely. Uh, cutting paste, though, I think this is the thing that's going to make this work well. Uh, this stuff, if you can read that, uh, I think is absolutely bloody awesome. I've used this on a few things now, and um, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, for cutting and drilling and all sorts. Uh, so I think that will be the thing that makes this work. So the awesome thing about mag drills, as the name implies, is there's a big magnet here. So when you're doing structural steel, you can put the whole thing and whack it on, turn the magnet on and go for it. And in this case, you know, it just means a big plate like this. So I can, I can go at it without needing to put it in a drill press. You now I can go in the center of it while some drill presses, the beds are not big enough and all that kind of thing. And you can basically use this like a drill press anyway. Uh, the only problem is, is they can be quite loud. I've already piloted these holes uh, to a certain extent, so it'll be really easy to center this up, I hope. Turn the magnet on. Let's go for it. So that's basically what it takes out, that's, in fairness, you know, 15 millimetres of solid steel for an extremely cheap uh, hole saw is, uh, is doing all right. Just after one hole, how's it keeping? It seems all right. Let's see how we get on with all the other holes. Wow, what a mess. Let me just wipe that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. No, uh, no special effects used there. It's just one wipe.
Okay, so that's what I would call my first pass, or the root run. So now the second run I will do is, say this was at 45, just off to the 60. So 45 in that plane, 60 in that plane. Uh, to do the next bead, I'm gonna do the, the other bead here now along the bottom on the plate. So I'm gonna do half into the weld, half into the plate. And all I'll do is from the 45 degree, I'll just angle it up slightly. So I'm going about 60, 60 degrees that way and 60 degrees this way. And I'll go around doing that run. And then on the third pass, I will do the same again. So from the 45 and I'll point up that way. Um, so it will be, um, 60 degrees in this plane uh, and vice versa if you get what I'm saying uh, anyway I'll show you Okay, so that's a multi-run. It's not the neatest of MIG welds I've ever done, but it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. It's certainly keyed into there fine. There's no, not, no, no undercut and it, all those little uh, ends tie in nicely. You'll notice that I started this side and then I went to this side and that's because normally when I finish a weld, I like to end on top of a start, if you see what I mean. So where I started a weld there, I ended it on it, and I, just because you, it melts quite hot into it, and where I finished, I've started. If that makes any sense whatsoever. I just find it neater, and I think it adds a bit more strength. So I'm gonna let that cool down, and hopefully it won't have bent too much. Hopefully it won't bend my frame too much. Uh, uh, I think it'll be all right. These little holes, you might be wondering, there and there, um, were actually vent holes uh, for in case I was to get this hot bit galvanized. Because uh, you imagine it's been dipped in molten zinc at so many hundreds of degrees C. If there's any air or moisture trapped, it will explode if it's got nowhere to escape. So any anything that's got a cavity, like a hollow inside it, you have to always create a ventilation hole so all the molten material can flow back out of it. Um, uh, I don't want it blowing up, that's for sure. Okay, so it's warm to the touch. Let's see if it's distorted or not. Yeah, you can just about see light either end. I mean, that was to be expected, really. I mean, the thing is, when you're doing anything like this, especially if you're going to fit it on site, you do leave a tolerance anyway. So there is, I did purposefully leave a gap uh, for shimming and grouting and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so uh, it, it will be absolutely fine. Anyway, whilst I was waiting for that to cool down, I've arranged these large bits of metal in this kind of a shape to start to um, prepare for creating the uh, the Y piece, the actual main frame of the staircase. So all of these are uh, reasonably flat and they're all the same dimension. So when I clamp to these, they should hold everything nice and rigid uh, for when I weld. So when I do weld the frame together, it's not gonna bow or twist because it's got these, these big things holding it nice and straight so that's the idea yeah, and i've had to arrange it in this kind of a interesting shape to hopefully uh fit everything
Anyway, like you can see, with a bit of jiggling around, it'll all uh, fit together nicely. Now, all of these bits, I actually had uh, laser cut as well. So all of this is really precise. Those measurements, those angles are exact. So, if you want to see more, subscribe, follow me, uh, and ask me anything you want. Ask me any questions uh, related to metalwork, obviously. Um, you know, I've, I've come to get some experience in things, and what I don't know, you know, maybe you could, you guys also might know a bit better as well on, you know, approaches, ideas, how to get around doing stuff. And, you know, I'll, I'll let you know uh, what I've thought about the comments on the next video as well. Because uh, if I've learned something new from you guys, I would like you guys to know that. <laughs> and maybe together we can learn more. Anyway, till next time, happy forging, a life worth living. See you later.